That's like one of the worst things you can say. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Nandi and I am a fourth semester pediatric nurse practitioner student and I am on the primary care track. So today, as you guys can see, based upon the title of this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the 11 things I wish I knew before starting my accelerated nurse practitioner program. So if you're interested in hearing me talk, 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 talk about the things that I wish I knew, then just keep on watching. All right, so just a disclaimer for this video, I split up the things that I wish that I knew into two categories, so one, is gonna be like school things that I wish I knew. And then the second category is more so like life lessons, life tips, advice, things like that, that I wish that I knew. And I feel like some of the life stuff you guys probably have heard already, but I think it hits different when you're actually going through something and you're the person going through it. You know what I mean? It's different. It's just a different experience. You know, the people that get it, get it, what I'm trying to say. But anyway, let's go ahead and start with the school category and let's start with tip number one. So tip number one, and don't mind me if I'm looking down, I have like everything typed out in my phone, so I'm just looking down. Um, but tip number one has to do with classes. So I know somebody actually put in the comments which i'll probably have to do later on like they wanted like an overall like general video about things to expect um but i'll have to really sit down <laughs> really sit down and get those notes together to film for you guys but if you're watching this i haven't forgotten about you girl but anyway just overall i wish that i knew about classes so in the master's portion because I also did, of course, my BSN before I did my master's. But for the master's portion, I wish I just had more general information about things to expect as far as classes. So just for you guys who are watching, and I'm sure it's different depending upon, like medical school is not gonna be the same as nurse practitioners, not gonna be the same as even just, you know, your regular BSN nursing program. But in my case, you know, for nurse practitioner, I wish that I knew more about just like core classes. So there are some classes that you took or take in your BSN that you'll also kind of take at an advanced level in your master's. So for example, pathophysiology. We take that in our BSN, but you also take an advanced level of that course in your master's as well as pharmacology. So you do have some like core classes that remain the same, but everything else is specifically directed towards your specialty. So all the rest of my classes were pediatric classes. And then it was sort of mixed in with like, you know, a few core classes that some other students from some of the other specialties may also be in. So, you know, it's very focused and you really, really just, you know, focus on your specialty classes. That's like your main thing, which makes sense. Um, so for my particular program, they made us actually choose our specialty before even starting, like before even starting day one. Um, so you definitely had the option to switch. As you guys know, I did the dual program, but if you were gonna switch, that had to be like early, early on, like maybe your last semester, or even third semester of your BSN before you even started the masters because they base everything off of slots and they have to know like head count, how many students are doing which specialty but yeah, I just wish I knew more about, you know, class setups, what to expect as far as that. And, you know, I guess at the time I didn't realize like how focused my classes would be on my specialty. But yeah, like I think even my first semester, I probably had like maybe two like core classes, I would say that everybody took and then the rest were just Pete's classes, which is great because obviously that's my specialty and it's what I was interested in. So that's tip number one that I wish that I knew. Let's go on into tip number two for school. So tip number two, which won't apply to everybody watching this video. I started my program, the BSN portion during COVID, primetime COVID. Um, and so because of that, a lot of things changed. 
um, schools started doing things that they wouldn't typically do. And although, you know, everything, of course, was out of my control as a student, nobody could predict a pandemic, but I definitely wish, <laughs> I definitely wish that I knew that the result of that would be even less breaks. So because of COVID, they took away pretty much all of our breaks. Like I think in our BSN, we probably had a Christmas break and that was it. But like typical stuff like fall break, spring break, they really didn't give us any breaks um, as far as holidays or anything like that. I think we had Thanksgiving too, but that was probably like two days. They didn't want to give us any breaks because they didn't want to risk the chance of students going home, being with family members and everybody coming back and giving all the students COVID. But I definitely wish that I knew that for sure. Um, but then at the same time, just being more aware of the fact that even besides COVID, that I was going to have pretty much very limited breaks just to being due to being in an accelerated program. So as you guys know, if you watch my videos, I was in school this summer. You're in school during the summertime no summer breaks and it's like you know I think when you sign the dotted line you like okay you know it's great I'm gonna be out in two years which it is it most definitely is it's a great you know quick way in quick way out um but I would be lying if I said I did not miss those breaks um I think after a while just consistently being on go for a long period of time it definitely takes a toll and even the fact that we do have little, like it's a pro and a con, I guess for some people, you know, the two week breaks are cool because you don't necessarily get out of your studying patterns. You know what I mean? Like you can you take a little mini break, I guess you can say, and then hop right back into it. Whereas, you know, some people that may have been out of school for years, it's very hard for them to get back into that routine, that structure. Um, so I guess that part is good, but I think sometimes for your mental, you need that break. You need a longer break than two weeks. Cause sometimes there was sometimes I kind of was just like, dang, like what was the point of the two weeks? You know, just when I start to get comfortable, it's like, okay, we gotta go right back to it. So I don't know. I just wish I was a little bit more aware of that. Accelerated programs are great. Don't get me wrong. They are amazing but just also be aware of what you're signing up for. And it really is like a dedication. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to tip number three. So thing that I wish that I knew or third thing that I wish that I knew was just that master's programs, which actually I did not know, I don't think before starting my master's program, but I think it's kind of like universal rule, like you have to get certain grades within your master's programs. I think it's an 80, I could be wrong. Um, I know at my school, we're required to get an 83 or above in all of our clinical courses, in all, all the course, any other course they tell us we gotta get an 83 in. So, I mean, it's pretty much 83 across the board. Um, and then this rule they actually recently changed before we were allowed to get one C in the program but you still have to like retake that course or whatever now they completely pretty much got rid of that <laughs> so I definitely um, I feel for myself because it's the last semester but I also feel for the new students I'm just like wow like that's definitely a lot of pressure these are not easy classes at all so yeah, I just wish I knew like great stuff, knowing, you know, I have to get an 83. Mentally, I just like to be prepared for things like that. Like, girl, you gotta get an 83 every time. There's, you know what I mean? Nothing less, period. So that's something else that I wish that I knew. Let's see. Fourth thing that I wish that I knew. Oh my gosh, classes being online because like I said, originally I started this program during COVID time. So prior to COVID, the classes that you know I'm currently taking now and even in my BSN were not online. Everything was in person. And personally, I think online is a great option and some people really do love it. Nandi does not. <laughs> That's just me being honest. I'm not a fan of online classes. 
Um, I think for me being online for so long personally, I think it became draining for me. And then I think it also made it harder to just do certain things, connect with professors, make friends, you know, really interact with, you know, even though you say friends, like people that are going to be your colleagues, people that you can, you know, call on when you need help or something like that, or, you know, may want advice about a differential or, you know, what something you see may be. I think building those connections and thing like, things like that is very difficult to do online. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but, you know, even for me, I would say in my specialty, I probably am really only close with two other people. And, you know, granted that's better than nothing, but I think even the times I have spent with some of the people within my specialty and things like that in person, I definitely feel like that in-person environment would have, I don't know, just enhanced relationships. That's a beautiful word to put that. Yeah, that's a beautiful way to put that. I think it would have um, enhanced relationships for sure. And just, I don't know. I just think I would have had a better overall experience. I think being online, it just, it didn't give me everything. It didn't give me the full, I feel like, Emory experience. You guys know my Emory. So, but yeah, I feel like for people with responsibilities, um, as far as like people who are working um, during their program, because we have some people that are part time. So like, yes, of course, if you're part time, you know, people have families, they have lives, people have kids, people like all of I feel like those reasons like, yeah, I 100 percent think that online is a awesome option. Of course, it should definitely be available. I just feel like for me personally, I like in person better. OK, so the next tip slash th thing that I wish that I knew. I don't even know what number this is. I think, is this five? Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, yes. So the fifth thing that I wish that I knew. I wish that I knew about me having to take classes along with going to clinical at the same time. I don't know, see, because I really, when I applied to programs, I applied to Emory and that was it. So I have no idea. <laughs> how other schools work um i do have friends and things like that that went to medical school and i know like for medical school i believe that their clinicals and classes are kind of like separate like they'll do their classes and then they'll do their rotations but you know with within my program i've done everything together so i'm going to clinical i'm going to class i'm going to clinical i'm going to class you guys know you see the vlogs so i wish that I knew that I would have to do that at the same time. It's definitely a lot. I wish I do kind of wish that they were separate because I feel like it's easier to focus and like solely focus on what you are learning when you can just do that. Literally just focus on class. But I think when you are mixing both, it makes it very challenging because I'm not going to lie, but even in the BSN, BSN we did 12 hour shifts. You know, you come home, you, you're you exhausted. Um, right now in my master's, depending upon the clinical location that I'm at, my hours vary. So it's definitely not as long as 12 hours, but it's like still in order to meet the semester clinical hour requirement, which for me this semester is 300 hours, you have to go multiple times per week. So it's pretty much like, you know, you're working part-time, full-time, plus also taking your classes so I don't know that's just something that I wish I knew I don't know if other nurse practitioner programs are the same but yeah just definitely be aware of that it definitely makes I think a huge impact on how you plan out your life you definitely have to be good with time management being disciplined all of those things I think are huge factors with having to do both at the same time all right, let's see. The next thing that I wish that I knew, oh, and they also recently changed this, was how far that I would have to drive to my clinical locations. So at the time that I started my program, 
the rule at my school was that they could place you up to 100 miles from the School of Nursing. They recently changed that to be 150 miles. Baby. You guys saw in my vlog, like when I was driving out even this summer, like some of my places it would take me like up to an hour to get to. Atlanta traffic is no joke. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. <laughs> like I was putting, this summer, I was putting gas in my car like three times a week. And if you also know this summer, gas prices were so high. I was like, I can't, I can't do this no more. Like, I can't do this. Obviously, I had to, but I'm like, I can't do this. Like, I'm just losing money. Like, this is outrageous. But yeah, like, just, just being mentally prepared to know, like, yeah, like, I have to drive extremely far. <laughs> and I mean, they did try. I mean, this semester, I got blessed with my clinical sites. Like, I'm really close to home like probably like 20 minutes for both my sites but yeah just be aware of your school's travel requirements be aware and the last thing that I wish I knew as far as the school category was just like overall number of clinical hours that I would need per semester and they definitely sent out a paper with this information on it but at the time baby i was dying like i was in the bsn and i was just like i'm just trying to like i'm the type of person i have to focus on one thing kind of at a time like mentally like i i definitely multitask but i mean like as far as big goals and so at the time when they sent out that paper telling me the hours i would need each semester i'm pretty sure i know i saved that document and i probably put it in an msn folder on my um desktop and I left it there until I was done with the BSN because I was like, I'm trying to folk, I'm trying to get to the MSN, okay? So <laughs> just being aware, and it does vary at my school based upon your specialty. So like even this semester, I'm doing 300 clinical hours. I have friends in like adult Gero and they're doing 240. So it's not the same for every specialty at my school. And I just wish that I was aware and like knew that beforehand. So hopefully all that stuff made sense. Definitely, you know, <laughs> you can ask me questions in the comments if you have them. But let's get into the juicy stuff because I feel like this stuff right here hits different. The life topic, category, things that I wish that I knew or just mastered i guess you can say prior to starting this program oh yeah we're gonna we're gonna get into it all right so diving into this life category the first thing that i have under this category is simple but sometimes easier said than done i would say believing yourself believing yourself and i'm sure we've we've all heard that right yeah believe in yourself girl believe in yourself but i think when you are and this doesn't just apply to nurse practitioner programs i feel like this applies to any you know higher education program whether that's you trying to become a lawyer whether that's you being in medical school like this really can apply to to so many things and i don't even want to say just like higher education programs but just in general even in the work field but this program for me has definitely taught me like you have to believe in yourself you have to have some level of confidence and i say that because especially in medicine like you guys know even based upon these little tv shows right you are put in so many different scenarios cases um where you're dealing with preceptors right you're dealing with somebody who is over you and i truly believe that preceptors can make or break your experience and what i mean is you know, you can have a great preceptor and trust me, even if you had no interest in that field, 
like, for example, let's say I had a neuroclinical placement, right? And before starting that placement, I was like, oh, I don't want to go. <laughs> I have no interest in neuro. I don't care. Like, I'm, I hate it. Like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to go. But I get to that clinical site and I have an amazing preceptor. You may leave there and you may be like, you know what? Neuro's all right with me. Like, neuro's okay. It's okay. Like, preceptors can literally make or break your experience sometimes. And I think this program has taught me, you know, sometimes you, it's part of the learning experience. But, you know, I've definitely had preceptors who were just like, okay, like, and I know one day I'll be out there in the field, so I'll have to know those answers. But you have to be comfortable and have some sense of confidence even in uncomfortable situations so for me like i'm not really somebody that likes to be put on the spot like i'm a i'm a preparer like all my friends that know me know that nandi likes to prepare for for any and anything like even if it's just mental i like to know what i'm walking into before i walk through that door you know what i mean i make lists I plan. I plan my life five years in advance. Even if things don't go my way, Nandi had a plan. Just know that. <laughs> it was written down and it may not have gone my way, but I had a plan. And so not knowing, you know, who may test you that day, who may walk up and be like, okay, well, I want you to do this and this and this and this and this. And what's the answer to this? Okay, the patient has this. So what you going to do next? What medicine you going to give? Do you think that's correct? And you just like, child, I hope so. <laughs> like, you know, you have to be comfortable to a certain extent being tested left and right, left and right, left and right. Like, and not to say that it's always, it's, I'm not saying that it's done in a malicious way. Um, because a lot of preceptors do that to really help you learn and to help you think through critical situations and just develop those critical thinking skills, right? But, you know, it's just something I feel like if you're not within certain fields and things like that, you may not have always experienced beforehand. So I think that it's important to just believe in yourself, believe in what you know, believe in what you've been taught. And, you know, somebody mentioned this on my panel I believe it was Atiana, but she was like, you know, it's just different when you have to voice your opinions and your thoughts out loud to somebody that's, you know, in a sense, in this level of hierarchy in a higher position than you, right? Somebody that's been doing this for 50 years. And <laughs> it's just, it's, it's different. It's different. So I'm here to tell you, like I said, just believe in yourself. You are more than capable and you will have those days, believe me, you will have those days where you feel discouraged and you will have those days where you just like, man, like, you know, sometimes you just question yourself. Like, am I smart enough to do this? I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. But I'm here to tell you that you are. You can do anything you put your mind to and you can most definitely get through, you know, these uncomfortable situations if they are uncomfortable for you because they're not uncomfortable for everybody but for me this was my first time I would say going through something like that so it wasn't something I was expecting it wasn't something I was used to it wasn't something that I liked I'm not a I'm not a pop quizzer like I don't like to be pop quiz every day every second you know what I mean I feel like <laughs> that just sort of I don't know it's just something I've never experienced before I've never had to deal with in any even like regular regular school settings no i really haven't so just make sure you know that you are that girl you are that guy you got this go in believe in yourself ask questions never be afraid to simply tell them that i don't know but can you you know tell me a little bit more about this there'll be so many times i literally look at my preceptor and be like you know what i'm not sure you know, and you have to take those as learning experiences. And like I said, my little school supplies haul, you guys know I kept carry my little notebook to jot down notes, anything that's important that my preceptor may tell me. Take that opportunity to learn and move forward. 
And guess what? Tomorrow's a new day and you're going to kill it. And you know why? Because you're going to go home. You're going to review those notes about everything that you learned that day. And the next time your preceptor asks you that question, baby, you know it. Period. And let's see. Let's move on to the second life thing that I wish I knew slash was more aware of prior to starting this program. It is so, so important to give yourself grace and to be kind to yourself. Oh my gosh, giving yourself grace. I don't think I've ever, I don't think, <laughs> honestly, truly, before starting this program, I don't think I ever even really knew what that meant like giving giving yourself grace like and by that i mean like you will have days where you are literally exhausted you are exhausted girl and you know nobody knows yourself better than you you know when you need to take a step back whether that is from responsibilities for example for me i don't go to work every weekend my boss and I, we, we talked, we on the same page, but she's also very encouraging and wants me to achieve my goals. And I feel like that's not typical. That's not normal for everybody. I have been blessed with that circumstance. But for me, I know like I can't do it all. I simply can't like like I said in previous videos, like your girl thinks she's a superhero some days, but I'm not like I'm I'm human and we need breaks and it is OK. Like sometimes I literally feel so bad, like knowing that I have this whole to do list. I have so many assignments, but literally all I want to do is lay down. All I want to do is watch a movie. All I want to do is, you know, hang out with friends or, you know, just do something slight and light like i don't want to do anything some days you know what i mean and it is that is okay like i promise you those days where sometimes i don't do anything the next time that i sit down after that to do homework girl i get 500 things done because i gave myself that chance to recharge like it's it's so needed in any type of rigorous program you know yourself don't go above and beyond your limits. You know what I mean? Take a step back when you need to, but give yourself grace. Be kind to yourself. Don't feel bad if you, you know, aren't doing the 1,000 things in your to-do list in that moment. It is okay. Trust me, the work will always be there. Like that's something I literally tell myself now. I'm just like, yeah, I'm gonna go for a walk. I'm gonna go to the movies because guess what when i come back the book is still gonna be there girl looking at me and i'm gonna be looking at it like <laughs> like it's always gonna be there it is okay and be kind to yourself girl treat yourself even if you're a guy watching this treat yourself like it's so important it is so important and for me it's literally like little stuff like you guys know I like go get my nails done. You know, I may go get my lashes done. Like be kind to yourself and not only with actions, but also with words. I think that's super important to say. Tell yourself in the mirror, like, you know, I can do this. I'm that girl. I am smart. I am capable. Like you have to feed yourself those positive affirmations, those positive thoughts all the time because there's no guarantee that you will have somebody to always tell you those things so you have to be the one to tell yourself that sometimes it's not always going to be your friends texting you being like girl you can do it like even though you want those positive people around you and you should have that positive community around you but i'm just saying if they don't you have to be the one to tell yourself that you can do it and i think that's so so important be kind to yourself okay Anyway, let's move on to the next life tip slash thing that I wish I knew, okay? Oof, this one, I will say I definitely had to learn while going through this program. You can't vent to everybody. You cannot vent to everybody. Let me tell you something. <laughs> and I have so many like I just have personal experience with this so I was like yeah 
I had to let the world know. I had to let you guys know. You cannot vent to everybody because I promise you, like I know in nursing, if you guys know, you know. We, even in the BSN, like you have classes, you are kind of taught more so about therapeutic communication, right? How to speak to your patients. Um, nurses are kind of trained in that aspect but this is real life <laughs> this is real life and i promise you not every friend not every family member may be the person for you to vent to and that's not to be mean or anything to say but it's just simply the truth you can't vent to everybody i promise you you know there'll be some people literally that i vented to that i told myself i was like never again because once i see how you react when i'm coming to you as a person I don't, I don't want to necessarily say in need, but as a person who's just coming to you to talk about how I feel, what, I, what I'm going through, you know, things that I may not even share with everybody. And I'm definitely not a person that shares my feelings with everybody. I don't. I'm so sorry, but I don't. But hearing people's responses, and I'll give you, I'll give you examples. Well, you signed up for this. I think I, <laughs> I think I am uh, aware that you know I kind of signed up to be a part of this program. That's like one of the worst things you can say. And let me tell you something. Sometimes if people are coming to you, and this also goes for people who are who just may be the friend, if people are coming to you to vent, sometimes that doesn't always require you to respond. Like sometimes that requires you to just listen. To listen and to say, you know what, I hear you, your feelings are valid, I'm here for you if you need me, and you got this, you can do this. Sometimes that's all you have to say. Sometimes you don't have to say anything at all. Like sometimes people just need, especially when you, babe, when you going through these programs, let me tell you, sometimes you just need to get it out. And I don't care, I, well, I do care, but <laughs> like, you just need to get it out. And you know, for some people that's crying, for some people that's writing things out, for some people that's talking verbally, like, but knowing who you can and cannot go to during those times or those vulnerable moments is really gonna save you. Because I promise you, you go and you vent to the wrong person. They tell you something smart or they say the wrong thing. You just feel even worse. You're like, all right, well, remind myself to not come talk to you ever again. Okay? Yeah, you can't vent to everybody. You can't. And that's something that I don't think I, yeah. I definitely was not really, you know, you kind of aware about it. But I think during... Like I said, those vulnerable times, like it hits different. It truly does. Let's move on though to my last and final tip slash things that I wish that I knew for this video. Last thing, make sure that you have outlets. I'm the type of person I truly feel like everybody should have various outlets. I think that you should have a physical outlet, something that's keeping you physically healthy, fit. I think that people should have a mental outlet. And I also think that people should have some type of creative outlet, right? And that can be different things for different people. Like for me, my creative outlet is YouTube. My physical outlet is Orange Theory. My mental outlet, sometimes, believe it or not, like I like to journal, which you guys have seen in my videos. Um, I'm really, I really wish, wish, wish I was a good um, person to meditate because I do think it's very beneficial to be able to sit there and really just like clear your mind and just have that woo-saw. I wish that was me. <laughs> I think meditation is very hard, but I'm just giving you guys like various examples. Boxing, running, swimming, 
basketball. I don't like you can have so many things. Creative outlets can be so many things for different people. Like, and I don't care if that's something just like, you know, girl, you made watercolor. You may be the best watercolor in the world and nobody knows. That is okay. I'm just saying, I just think that it's so important to have outlets for yourself because yes, like this program or whatever program you're in is something that you're doing at this phase, at this time in your life. But school isn't everything. Don't, don't let whatever program and whatever you're in law school anything don't let it completely devour your soul like we're not doing that okay take the time for yourself do things that you enjoy do things that are going to make you happy you know do things that are good for your mental health because it's important you know you can't progress in anything or take care of anybody if you're not taking care of yourself. That's just simple facts. So make sure that you have your outlets and you know, do what you have to do. You know yourself best. I'm just here, you know, giving you guys some little, some little tips, some little <laughs> things that I feel like have been kind of beneficial for me. And I just think it's important to share with you guys, but that is my last and final thing that I wish that I knew before starting my Accelerated Nurse Practitioner program. I really hope that you guys enjoy this video. I feel like it ended up being kind of long, but I really hope that you learned something. I really like sitting down, just talking with you guys, chatting with you guys. So also let me know in the comments if you guys enjoy these videos and I can film more of them for you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to your girl. Also turn on your post notifications. Okay. Oh, and follow me on Instagram. <laughs> That's the last thing. And follow me on Instagram. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.